welcome to Burgess Junction and the Wyoming BDR. Forty-three miles to Montana, and then continue. I'll get gas again when I get back here, and then heading to Ten Sleep. That was good. I didn't sleep great. My uh, my tent site was not super level. My entire campsite wasn't super level, so there wasn't a whole lot I could do about it. But I slept pretty well. Oh, okay. We're just gonna go straight to dirt. Sounds good to me. But yeah, back on my own, back with a loaded bike, back to doing my thing. I should see there's a group of four that I ran into at the bar last night. They came back here and camped somewhere, and they're um, just finishing up, so they started south to north. So I'll see them more than likely either coming or going, but I should see them at some point. They basically told me that I'll probably make quite a bit better time than I expect. They were a full day ahead of their schedule and they were not trying to go fast. So, we'll find out. So let's see, yesterday was my birthday. I turned 38. And one of the things that I had talked about with Tana was that before I hit 40, I would like to have set off on a round the world trip. So, I'm at least on schedule. <laughs> Don't know if this will end up being an around the world trip. That will depend on finances more than anything else. Did hear that there is some fairly deep sand as you get kind of closer to 10 sleep. Because it's outside of like Hyatt Mill or something like that. So, I'll be watching for that. straight okay <laughs> let's not get lost while I'm enjoying the views <laughs> uh, I will not be doing the expert alternates uh, unless I link up with some folks and start riding with other people according to the map most of this is pretty fast flowy type stuff so I expect I'll make pretty good time I don't know of any technical challenges between here and Montana border the folks at Burgess Junction were saying they've seen quite a lot of bikes come through doing the BDR. They're already pretty well aware of what it is, and yeah, hopefully it'll provide some support to the community, you know? There's apparently a group of 12 coming north. <laughs> I'll see them potentially today, probably more likely tomorrow. I would imagine they're moving fairly slow. They're part of some kind of tour group. I'm not sure who. I'll probably stop and say hi if I see them. Oh, squirrel! Oh, I hope I didn't hit you. I really don't know. I, th I think I did, to be honest. <laughs> I should not hit... Like, I should not have to ride through snow the uh, rest of the trip. The only exception to that might be when I do uh, California and Nevada in the winter. I'm, there's a possibility I could hit snow if they have, like, an early snowfall. Livestock guardian dogs. I don't see any livestock, so hopefully the dogs aren't here. Because, yeah, I do not want to get attacked by a dog. <laughs> Some of those things can be serious. So they use livestock dogs. They're not shepherds. They're not herding them. They are companion animals, basically, that protect the herds from things like wolves. And uh, take it real personal <laughs> if you get near any of the animals. And they will absolutely bite the shit out of you. <laughs> I would 
say Wyoming's probably going to have more two track than any other BDR. guys in the group yesterday had to replace a tire because he sliced it on a rock. This is the section which is not in the video for the Wyoming BDR and it's because there was a fire going on up here and so it was closed, which is too bad. Just, just look at it. that would not be easy going up if you're going north to south but I think with this being an out and back if you're going north to south most people are going to be doing what I'm doing and doing this section on their way up to the border and then the highway back to get back onto the route that would be my guess at least this is definitely a route you probably don't want to be on if it's got water on it. Still on track. I mean, again, what else am I gonna follow? There's nothing else out here. Here's the road. All right, on to the pavement. Montana State Line, 12 miles. Eight hundred feet. High point of the Wyoming BDR, I think. I'll confirm that when I get where I'm going tonight and look at the map.
that's it right there. A few inches later. There was section eight of the Wyoming BDR. Now I just gotta ride out of here. Oh, here comes the bikes. Yeehaw! Yeah, this is beautiful, God. Uh, enjoy the flies when you get to the border. There's thousands of them. <laughs> oh yeah, this is chill. There was, a, there was those little rocky bits over before you hit the highway, but other than that, I mean, this has been nice, so. Well, you only got 500 more miles of that rocky shit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, well, ride safe. Yeah, you too. Have a great trip. You too. So I ran into those guys at the bar in Burgess last night. They're all from basically Wyoming, and they're doing this. All right, and I am going to stop recording basically here because I'm on pavement all the way to Burgess Junction, and then I will start recording again in Burgess Junction after I get gas and get back onto the route. So I will see you there. And we will see what else the Wyoming BDR has in store for today. Eventually. Okay. <clears throat> Apparently, there may be some riders who need some assistance. Somebody was posting on the Facebook group that they were between Burgess Junction and Ten Sleep. I think they were going south. And they had a burned out clutch on a KLR trying to figure out how to get some help and I replied back and basically said you know I'm going the same direction barring you know an inability to fix it given tools I at a minimum I have a tow strap let's see if I see them or not I may not even see them really Looks like I might get rained on at some point. Hope not. Because some of these are the roads that will turn to absolute goop. Temperature is perfect. It's like 75 degrees. The sun keeps dipping in and out of the clouds. The super shirt keeping me cool. It doesn't move air like a vented jacket does. It's hard to describe how it's different. It just, I mean, it feels kind of like just the all of the fabric kind of vents pretty well. And as soon as you're moving any kind of airflow, it wicks so well. You just, the heat just blows off of you. It's great. When you're not moving, it's fairly warm. To be honest, that's everything that we wear in motorcycling. If you're not moving, you're hot. Check out that view. See, and this isn't even like technical, it's just bumpy. <laughs> you can definitely tell people have tried to come through here when it was wet. And that probably did not go well. back in National Forest. Okay. Whew. Shake the hand out a little bit. I would guess that the sand is what probably burned out the KLR's clutch. Because, yeah, clutching through sand will uh, do a number sometimes. Especially if your clutch isn't quite adjusted, right? This is just so pretty. It's pretty chill riding, but it's absolutely stunning up here. 
those little like high alpine meadows. I'm at 9,000 feet altitude. It's uh, 60 degrees according to that. Which with the sun behind the clouds feels really nice. God, this doll, this just reminds me so much of Colorado. If I just popped this footage up and you didn't know where I was, you would think I was probably in Colorado or maybe Idaho. Also kind of keeping an eye out for antelope. This is a little high for them, but given the temperature, they might have come up here just to escape the heat. I saw a bunch of them chilling under a tree yesterday on my way out here. Four of them, okay. Yeah, they're super spread out. Two more. Yeah, big old group of five. Good for them. Mostly KTMs, it looks like. That's a BMW. And KTM. Well, Husqvarna, but same difference. <laughs> well, that was a snake. It's like a little garter snake or something. I don't think I hit it. It was just a wee little one. Just chug up this hill a little bit. I'm going this way. Pardon me. get a little bit technical. sure there'd be some easy diversions around this if you didn't feel like doing this bit it's not bad though you just gotta pick your way through you're not gonna go through fast if it's wet you're probably gonna have to go around because you can see where water is sat in here and just messed stuff up So this are almost like two track OHV trails, you know, banked into the turns and stuff. Places. 
Just trying to ride this ridge line as much as I can. That is Bighorn Lookout. Go over there real quick and just take a break. Yeah, this is where they were dangling, dangling their legs off. Whew. Man, you could hang glide off of this. Holy crap. A few inches later. Yeah, it's just a rim. It's a cliff. Very rocky. We're gonna go outside line, I think, for this. I wouldn't have wanted to be the guy bringing that sucker up the hill. Yeah, there we go. Alright, I'm gonna start descending. Which also means it's probably gonna start getting hotter. Boink! I may stay intensely for a day because I was planning on just taking today off. I had built 16 miles, but the lodge was full and the camping situation wasn't great. So I figured I would just move on. But yeah, I'd like to take a break for a day. Look at that though. It's crazy how much the elevation just drops off to the plains. Horses. Don't think you're wild. But hi. Hi pretty babies. Hi pretty ladies. Maybe. You might be guys, I can't tell. Okay, I'll move on. You go back to doing your thing. Yep, temperature's going up fast. Dropping down into farming. Based on the irrigation that's going on over here. I'm only 60 miles from Tinsley, so... Still keeping an eye out for this KLR. But I kind of doubt I'm going to see them. I'm guessing they already figured out a way to nurse the bike into ten sleep or out to a road somewhere where they could pick it up. Alright, I am going left. That's all I'll say. I have Bill Logging Road, Forest Service Boundary, blah, 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 okay. I have to imagine this is where I'm going to start seeing some sand. And 53 miles to 10 sleep. Oh yeah. There we go. Yeah, that washed out real bad at some point. gonna get real bad with more bikes on it it's already uh, not great oh I okay I remember this from the uh, video Yep. Because I ain't going 
off into there. Okay, I want over here. Well, maybe not. <laughs> it, they're both pretty bad. Yep, that's pretty sandy. Coming down that wouldn't be super easy either. Because you're having to like cross hill. This is pretty fun. It's definitely not fast. Like, if you're on a dirt bike, yeah, you could blast through here. There, I'm out of the sand for a minute. Get some speed up real quick. Alright, is this gate? It appears to be closed. I'm on the right side of the fence. center. It's like, no, you little <laughs> go straight. And rocks. Ah. And big rocks. Oof. There we go. weather keeps doing that I may not be able to fly the drone oh here good here's the main road or a main road and the good news is the trail is going in the correct direction for me to get away from the storm nope holy f Ian. <laughs> well, I think I can say that I can. F I found what burned out the KLR's clutch. The logging trucks have just turned this to mush. I mean, that was a foot deep. I just sunk. Tell what's soft or not. Unfortunately, I think this may turn into a highway ride into 10 sleep because I'm not going to want to be on these roads when they're wet. And I know that I pop out onto the highway before too much longer. I think it's 12 miles based on the, that. So if this chills out and I'm riding in good weather, then I will continue on the off-road and get into tent sleep. But if it is still raining on me, I will probably knock it off at the highway and just get into town. It definitely cooled off. Or is it down at yeah, 70? I'm glad I got through as much as I did when I did, because 
If I was running any later, I'd probably be setting up camp back there somewhere. Ooh, that was a good one. I hope that came through on the camera. <laughs> I may have to take my sunglasses off here in a minute. The sound of the rain on my helmet's actually kind of nice. It's sort of like being in a tent when it's raining. That's better. I think I'm about to pop out in the open. Okay, I go. Let's see what I do here. So I go around. I do not like that. All right, we're gonna give it a minute because I'm definitely in no rush and I'm not looking to get struck by lightning. So camera's off. Just, just listen to it. <laughs> Much, much later. All right, let's see how muddy we're about to get. It has actually moved most of the way on, so I'm not really worried about the lightning anymore. It's just seeing how muddy this road's about to be. We're gonna get, this is gonna be slow as hell, so if you're expecting exciting riding footage, this ain't gonna be it. Bikes on ice. Oh no, 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 no. Okay. Ugh. That could have been a lot worse actually. not even gonna try and get out of this rut. I am just gonna follow it all the way. A little rocky here. It's about to be probably the slowest escape from the mud that you'll ever see, but I don't care. <laughs> there is that there was no bailout like 
I was already back here, so I just gotta keep going. But I don't really have a choice right now. I think it's only like four miles, basically, to the highway. So, I will get there. It'll just be slow. <laughs> very, very slow. And thanking God that I have good tires. Thank you, Motaz. Yeah, welcome to Wyoming. <laughs> All right, what do we got here? Is this gonna be two track going across this field? I mean, this is barely rideable. If I can stay kind of up towards the center like this, I might be all right. All right, it has stopped raining. Whew, that was slippery. Okay, so I zoom out, Bighorn view, and then yeah, US 16 is right after that. Dancing on ice skates. <laughs> Except it's a 500 pound bike. Staying on the high side. Oh, that was almost really bad. It's just super sketchy. Not quite to the point where I need to just ride in the grass yet, but I'm close. Yeah. I mean, if I could get out over there, let's see if I can maybe get it up into the grass. Come on. Oh. Nope. 20 minutes later. Let's see what happens if I try to pick this up. Okay. But yeah, I'm gonna go up basically the edge of the road in the grass where I have traction. This has turned into a day, for sure. Slow and steady. Yeah, it's okay. This isn't sketchy at all. Ooh. There's a road, or what used to be a road. Oh, come on. Yes. Going up here. I'm gonna cross the road. Oh, f okay, I need to take a minute. Okay, so this is an old road, I think. I basically just have to kind of hope there's nothing real big on it. It's something though. I want up here, there we go. I do not advocate this. And I'm not a fan of it myself. But right now, is that or be stuck out here. Nope. 
yeah do not come back here if it's wet full stop god this is so much easier without luggage on let's get through these first oh. About the only things I can say is, at least it's beautiful. I know that I am close. I know that I am actually quite close. Shows you how much traction I have. Somewhere between and all. We're gonna try something kinda dumb, but at least not dangerous. I'm gonna leapfrog. So, I've got my gear there. I'm gonna get down here, I'm gonna try and get over to the left there, into the grass, like I was doing before. I am literally less than a mile from something called Deerfield Lodge. It's not gonna get dark till nine. So the question is, can I go a mile in about two hours? And <laughs> the uh, honest answer to that question is I have no idea. Okay. Oh, I have no front brakes. Okay. Okay. Leg one. A few inches later. All right. So I got Buck over here. Who's gonna help me by taking my luggage? I'm literally just riding through this blind. Sorry, cow. Pardon me. Pardon me. Okay, I gotta come down to the road. Get a little bit of speed, maybe clear some of that mud out. <laughs> it's just exhausting. Oh, I can imagine. Especially if you've been doing it for the last five, six miles. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna try and get down this bit. up on the rock. Oh my god, the mud in my front wheel is just acting like a brake. Okay, get a little bit of speed, see if I can fling some of the shit off. Go high side. Can't see a thing. Okay.
this will be fine, yeah. Oh, God. You'll definitely be in there. <laughs> Along with this show. That is, that's not the dumbest thing that, I, that I've ended up in, but it's pretty close. Sleep Wyoming. I am really sore after yesterday. Wow. Didn't break anything as far as I can tell. But that was a rough day. <laughs> I'm gonna work on getting a little bit more mud off of her. But yeah, I've probably knocked 10 pounds ish of mud off of the bike already. dirt so just nice relaxing day I expect tomorrow I will get to lander so I'm gonna go back in here I'll take a nap I'll talk to you tomorrow when I'm on the road who I needed that day off Not sure how long until I get into the dirt. I know today is supposed to be fairly fast. Um, there's not really any known technical bits on this. That was good though. I needed that break for sure. Let me kind of hit the reset button. Beautiful morning. Supposed to be in the mid 80s today. It's only 102 miles to Shoshone. That's gonna go pretty quick based on what I've heard from various people. And then I will stop in Lander versus continuing on to Atlantic City because there is nothing in Atlantic City. I knocked probably 10 pounds of mud off the bike yesterday. And I expect if the roads are dry, I will probably rattle another couple of pounds off as we get up here. I can feel <laughs> I just got hit by a chunk of mud coming off the bike. Carter Inn in Tinsleep, Wyoming. It was fantastic. Would highly recommend if you're coming through on the BDR and you want to not camp, stay there. That was great. 
there is a lot of camping available around in the area, so like if you want to camp, you absolutely can. After that day that I had though, I was not camping. <laughs> this is just amazing out here. Rolling plains and red dirt. There's a ton of people on this route right now. It seems like everybody's trying to do the Wyoming BDR since it's new. Oh, there went a big old chunk of mud. <laughs> I can hear stuff rubbing on the tire. And then I'll hit a big bump and it'll, it'll go flying out and then it gets quiet again. There it goes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it gives you an idea of just how much mud was caked onto my bike. <laughs> I'm just dodging dirt clods. Oh god, that's funny. Yeah, this is all basically just powdered clay. Yeah, almost. I mean, that's almost. Oh, hi. What are you? That was a badger. And it ran off already. Damn, I'm gonna have to look at the videotape on that. I'm like 90% sure that that was a badger. You don't see those very often. And wild turkeys. Hi, turkey. Where's more of you? Oh, little baby turkeys. Little baby turkeys. I hope to God you can see that. <laughs> Here they are. It's, oh, mama, you're okay. You're, you're okay. Mama turkey and it's got like four or five little baby turkeys. You like can't see the babies. They are hidden in the grass. There's two or three over here. There's three. There's one over there. I'm hoping if it there's one. Hi little baby turkeys. I hope I didn't split you up. I don't think I did. Okay. I'm gonna move on. I'm not gonna mess with you and your chicks. Those suckers were tiny. The babies were like that big. <laughs> <laughs> Just seeing it all today. I really think that was a badger. That's, that's my best guess at this point of what that was. I think it was a badger. But I'll look at the, the tape and let, and let you know. That's really cool though. Oh, hi sheep. Why are you over here? You need to be on the other side of the fence. Yeah, I'm not really on a schedule, but I think I'm going to finish the Colorado BDR by probably the first week of August. I can't imagine it's going to take me much longer than that. have come down. Oof. This is a lot like some of the sections on the Idaho BDR. It's not really, there's some more wild turkeys right there. And more chicks. Hi guys. Or ladies, I guess the Tom is definitely not still going to be around. Um, but yeah, a lot of this reminds me of parts of the Idaho BDR where it's not technical at all. You're just making miles. It's, it's beautiful. You know, it's super pretty, but you're just doing 40, you know, consistently. <laughs> it's the Orchard Ranch Airport. Nor <laughs> Norwood International Airport. I love it when they do stuff like that. It's so funny. Which, I mean, if somebody flies in from Mexico or Canada, that makes it an international airport.
Oh, that was a snake. I think that was a rattlesnake. I'm gonna actually go back and look at that. I'm not gonna get close, but I wanna see it. Oh yeah, you are a rattlesnake. Whew. You're okay, I ain't gonna do nothing to you. I just wanna take a look at you. Did you get hit? Oh, you did get hit. I don't think I did that to you though. Oh. Yeah, I'm gonna go down here and flip around and finish you off. I'm sorry, buddy. That's unfortunate. I hate to do that, but somebody already ran your head over. I'm not gonna have you suffer. All right, sorry, bud. So basically what I end up doing is I go down through Shoshone and then down to Lander and then Atlantic City and around to Beaver Rim and all that stuff. And what I'm having to do is basically skirt the edge of both the Wind River Indian Reservation and the Wind River Wilderness Area because you can't have vehicles in there. And it's I'm basically going to be on the other side of the ridge from where I came through when I was on the Continental Divide, because the Continental Divide, I had the same issue. I can't go through the wilderness areas, which run along the ridge line, and I can't, and I'm not gonna go through the Indian Reservation, especially in 2020 when COVID was going on. And so it's the same thing on the BDR. You end up skirting around both of those areas to be able to get through. And it's just kind of the only way to get through those areas. So when I went through on the Continental Divide, I was down kind of on the lowlands. And when I go through this time, I'm gonna be up on the ridge line following ranch trails. They are not wrong about this being a remote BDR. Lander, where I'm probably gonna stay tonight, is the, mo is the largest town that the route goes through. And Lander's only Maybe 50,000 people, maybe. I'll have to look. Oh, there's Cottonwood Pass. It was right there. So yeah, not, not much of a pass. Tomorrow, I think the idea would be to be up early and moving because I know the hard part of the day is gonna be near the end and I'd rather have it not be super hot. It's 9.40, I've already gone 60 miles. I, I really like this super shirt, you know, I've now worn it in, let's see, it was 50 something the other day, up to 102, and as soon as you get air moving over it, it feels like you're just wearing a long sleeve t-shirt. I heard somebody describe it as you put it on and it just melts away from your awareness. And that's a very good description of kind of how it feels. Like you, you put it on, the armor has to warm up just a little bit and then it conforms and you just forget that you have it on. It's just not a factor in how you move, how it feels. Like the Alpen Stars one was good, it was comfortable, but there were times where you were just always a little bit aware of it, especially the back plate, because the back pad on that armor was basically a hard armor protector. And you just, you kind of knew it was there. Uh, in my case, it was just a little tall for my torso. And so if I, if I leaned my head back, I could actually hit the top of the back plate. Where on this, I really don't have any awareness of it. You know, the, the chest protector's right here and I can feel it. I mostly am just feeling the weight of my backpack as it sits on the armor and not the actual armor. And so people are kind of 
saying this maybe isn't the most interesting part of the route. And they're right, like the, the riding's not real difficult and there's not much to look at and stuff, but it's still beautiful. You know, it's like the desert. It's basically a high altitude plane. I mean, we're at 5,000 feet altitude just sitting here. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> I'm just kind of surprised there's still that much mud in my fender. Another one. Oh, God. Yep. Danger gas. It was a me, I promise. <laughs> Stupid joke, I know. Yeah, we're going left. Oh, that was a big one. <laughs> yeah, I can't have too many of those left in the fender. Like, it's gotta be getting pretty. Oh, <laughs> speak of the devil. <laughs> it's gotta be getting pretty clear by now. <laughs> I'm not trying to go fast. I am just hauling ass through here, though. Hello. Alright. Group of two. are going to be wild horses. Oh, and there's a colt. There's a little tiny baby. It's right by this black horse that's running the lead. Up lead. Just a little baby horse. Hi, guys. I'm not going to mess with you. I'm just going to come over here and head this way. Oh, beautiful babies. He's super little. Holy crap. More of them. Hi guys. Sorry. Sorry. I'm just gonna go over here. Don't mind me. No. Oh, beautiful horses. Definitely wild. You can tell when they want nothing to do with you like that. That's loose. Alright. Basically sand. God damn, dude. Just give me no room at all, okay? F you. Like the bridge, I get it's a one lane bridge. But just don't bother moving over at all when you're off the bridge. Two track, but it's pretty nice. 
noise. Hi, Antelope. Yeah, you guys go run off over there. A whole bunch of them. Rainbow Cliffs. the road again. Yep. Yeah, there's the winds. You can just barely see them. More beehives. I love it. Help out the pollinators as much as you can. Oh god. But I want to get into town, figure out where I'm going to try and stay at. I'm not going to try and camp, it's hot. Alright. Approaching. I guess I'm not actually in Lander yet. This is, uh, whatever that town is just to the west of it. Alright, I am going to go ahead and kill the cameras now because I know I'm on pavement all the way to Lander. And I will talk to you tonight at some point when I figure out where I'm going to stay. stuff on and get going. This should be the toughest day on the actual official type of stuff. Yennefer is clean. Welcome to Lander. Had a really good stay. Washed probably another 10 pounds of mud off the bike. Got the chain lubed and all that. Goal for today will be Alcova, or potentially as far as Elk City. Did talk to Tana, and we are going to try and meet up this weekend. Today is Wednesday. On Saturday, the hope would be that I might be able to get to Leadville and camp with her and her friends. They're gonna set up at a lake outside of Leadville.
city. Just trying to kind of save my energy for later because I know this afternoon is going to be tough. South Pass City 12 miles and Atlanta City 16 miles. It is not super warm. It's 59 degrees. I'm not cold. But the, uh, you know, the super shirt's like wearing a long sleeve. Oh, God. The super shirt's like wearing a long sleeve t-shirt. So, you know, over 30, 40 miles an hour, that wind starts getting you. It's supposed to potentially be fairly warm, so it might hit 90. The goal would be to be through the hard part before it gets too hot. That's actually the trail, technically. Not sure which one of those I was supposed to follow, but... Whatever. I think I need to turn. Yep. That's not well marked. That's another tenor, right? <laughs> okay. Oh, he's way back here. Okay. I'm going to get somewhere. There we go. Where I can pull over. How's it going? Good. How about you? Not too bad. There may be a guy on an Africa Twin behind me. He's not with me, but I, I saw him earlier and I don't know if he's following this route or not. Okay. But other than that, yeah, it's just me. Cool. All right, this is the last of us. Nice. All right, have a Having good one. fun. Enjoy the ride. Oh yeah. riding this route. You know, it's the first year. Gotta try it out. And gate. Crossing the road. Oh, cross-country ski area. Okay. So yeah, it's probably OHVs. <laughs> CJ. Uh, it's probably OHVs in the summer and cross-country skiing in the winter. Yeah, I've never come through here from this direction, so I wasn't sure what to expect. South Pass City is neat, especially if you get here kind of in the middle of the day, because a lot of the buildings are open as like living museum type stuff back into the parts of Wyoming that I know so well. <laughs> Atlantic City is pretty nice. It's just a little strange. Most of the traffic before was basically related to Continental Divide because the Continental Divide comes right through here. And basically you hitch from here like into Lander. But now with the BDR going through it, 
it should it should be good for it I would imagine you know you had some people that did trips through here because the Continental Divide went through here some of the tour groups that followed Continental Divide stuff you know we came through here with West 38 Moto so yeah they're gonna see a lot more motorcycle traffic and hopefully people stop and get food and you know all that stuff so yeah All right, 147 miles to Alcova. We'll see how this goes. It is nine o'clock, basically exactly. Yeah, working our way out to the Beaver Rim. And this is basically all parts of the Great Divide Basin, which if you don't know what that is, the Continental Divide runs down the middle of the United States and it divides the watersheds of the country so everything to the east of it runs to the Atlantic Ocean and everything to the west runs to the Pacific Ocean and one of the exceptions is this area which is referred to as the Great Divide Basin or the Bay Great Basin whatever they want to call it and it is an endoheric I'm not sure if I'm saying that right but it's a it is an area where the water doesn't leave it is a depression that lays along the Continental Divide, and basically the water does not flow out. It's just kind of a unique geologic oddity in the United States. Today's gonna be a bit of a rarity on this, on really any of the BDRs, because most of it is essentially two-track. There's a few areas in Colorado with two-track, a few in Nevada. Most of the BDRs are on at least more well-established roads and around here it's you get me it's two track it's a single lane you know there's nothing else <laughs> so I mean I love two track on an adventure bike it's so much fun is a damn five ton. <laughs> it's it's a literal military five ton. Somebody use that as their ranch vehicle or something? That's crazy. Here, I'm just gonna do this. Oh, he's pulling over for me. I mean, that's one way to do it. I feel bad for you with the diesel prices right now, but hey, whatever works. You definitely would be able to get out here in the winter. <laughs> because I can see a lot of times you can see whether somebody's coming for a couple of miles all right on 
to the two track, it looks like. stay like this forever, but this is just really enjoyable. Interesting. I go right there. No big deal. Reminds me of that a lot of a lot of that stuff in Nevada between Austin and Elko. You can't really go fast, but it's not, you know, difficult. You're just riding along. Bonk. <laughs> what two track?
93 miles from Alcova, so I've definitely got the fuel range. Gone 100 miles this morning. It's only 11.30. Oh, hello. Is that a Ducati? I think it is. With the Torek. How's it going? You got a group of like six dirt bikers out in front of you. Yeah, we've been leap from leapfrogging them for the last. Oh, I bet. Yeah. The last four days. It's the first one of these I've seen in person. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> How is it? Not bad. Yeah. Yeah, still getting used to it. I I bet. <laughs> How was the route from Alcova? Um, you're gonna hit some sand. Yeah, I'd heard that. There's definitely some more sand up north of Ten Sleep. The the logging trucks have been through there, so it's just turned it into powder. So but, uh, it rained on up north there, and how did it turn? It's not rideable. If it's raining, just get to the road. Um, I, it took me four hours to go eight miles. Yeah, down south by Boyer Ranch there. Yeah, back. pretty much the entire route. Like, if it rains on it, your day's over. Yeah. We, had, <laughs> we had rain on the first two days. Oof, yeah. It was pretty brutal that first, especially the first day. It started to dry out the second day. Yeah. But hopefully it'll by stay. yourself? Yeah. All right, well, you have a good ride. You as well. Take it easy. shocked that I was by myself. Yes, people do do stuff like this alone. It's maybe not the best idea, but it's doable. Wow. how much the increased traffic is going to affect the quality of these trails. There's always, you know, a trade-off. And if people are already kind of being bad about making their own path, that doesn't bode well for the future. At the same time, you know, the ranchers make their own workarounds all the time. Anytime it rains or there's a giant mud pit that they don't want to deal with, they create a new track also. A lot of times that becomes the road. I wonder if it's enough, if the, if the rim is enough to keep cows up here. I can't tell if there's ways down it, basically, is what I'm trying to say. Because it seems like there would be a few ways to get through would mean you would still need fences. A lot of areas the ranchers will use natural features like this to keep the cows where they want them. And I'm just wondering whether or not the rim itself is enough of a feature to keep the cows up here. I would guess probably, but with maybe a, a few exceptions. It's a little bumpy. <laughs> That's 
all BMWs, I think. I don't see a Ducati. How's it going? 20 minutes later. Whew, these guys are all from the East Coast. They are uh, getting a workout out of this. They started north of Alcova today. Granted, they're on big old bikes, so with a lot of weight. Take it easy. All sorts of groups. That is the fifth group of bikes that I have seen today. They sounded very tired. <laughs> But then again, all three of them are on GSAs with full luggage. Those suckers don't float that great, no matter what speed you do. But yeah, sounds like I'm probably going to make it to Alcova, maybe, and be pretty tired. So, that's fine. Those guys are just trying to get to Lander today, which should be imminently possible. That should not be a problem. 83 miles to Alcova. Already gone 110. Yeah, ever since I made the suspension adjustments, this is a different bike through sand and loose stuff. You really can just kind of track. If I don't have luggage on it, it's amazing. It's like a dirt bike. And it basically just came down to getting the preload off, especially in the rear so that it settles in the back and lightens the front up and then i also adjusted the compression and rebound dampening to be a plusher ride and it works really well god that's deep i'm guessing this is starting to get into the stuff that they were talking about oh yeah see their tire marks just going everywhere. It's like a little kid got a hold of an Etch-a-Sketch. Yeah, I feel bad for those guys. Those big ass bikes and this stuff would be a handful. Unfortunately, BMW has been a little too successful at their marketing for their adventure bikes. And so a lot of people really do think to be able to do this kind of riding, you need a 1200, 1250 series with all of the stuff and you know, I mean, you just, you don't. You can absolutely do this on just about whatever. Move, bird, Jesus. <laughs> I don't think I hit it, but, but yeah, I mean, you know, there's plenty of people doing these on inexpensive, easy bikes. You could do this on a 20 year old DRZ and probably have a blast. All right, I gotta be a little bit careful about letting my speed climb up. Because I'm still expecting to hit more sand. If, if that's all the sand was that people were complaining about, I'm going to be shocked. I think this might be the bail off. It's gotta be. Ooh, hi. Ooh. All we can do is see what it turns into. Didn't mean to make that rhyme, but hey, why not? Fell over. 
over there. Those are some of the really hard ones when somebody wipes out and creates a big old just, you know, mess in the sand because then the bike doesn't want to go through straight. Super pretty to track. I think I'm in fourth gear right now. Like, <laughs> yeah, I gotta be by how I'm chugging up this hill. I mean, anytime you're riding two track, you gotta be on your game. Cause, you, cause on an adventure bike, at least you're essentially riding single track. It's not really easy to cross over between the tracks. And so you just have to follow the line, but it's a ton of fun. But you know what? Stuff like this is also why they have people on the filming expeditions driving big bikes with luggage. Because if you can't do it on a big bike with luggage, you probably shouldn't be doing it on a big bike with luggage. And they want to make sure that they accurately reflect some of the people that are beginning coming out here and trying this because there's going to be people on big bikes with luggage so you know when they plan these routes and when they test ride these routes they're really good riders don't get me wrong but they absolutely take big bikes with full luggage because they want to make sure that it's not going to be something that's just going to hurt people <laughs> but just because you know Jocelyn Snow rode up here on a 1200, 1250 GS with full luggage. Doesn't mean you necessarily want to. Jocelyn is an incredibly good rider. And there were still areas where she was having trouble, you know? And if you get in over your head, don't be afraid to stop. There's no award for getting up here. There's no award for me doing all of the routes. I chose it because I wanted to, which is why I'm not afraid to turn around when stuff gets super stupid. You know, I'm by myself. The goal, the goal is to be able to keep going. Your goal should be not to get hurt, not to trash a bike, and still just have fun. If you're riding it, stops being fun, stop. You know, sometimes you just gotta embrace type two fun and stuff like that. But every time you go out, it shouldn't be a solid type two, type three fun kind of day. All right, gear down. Oh, excuse me, bunny. All right, I'm in third gear. This is pretty deep down here. I feel like this is the hill where I saw somebody get super loose. They saved it. But they definitely had a few moments <laughs> on their way up the hill. Oh yeah, you can see the sand. Rock in my foot. <laughs> yeah, just easing through it. I don't really want to be down this ravine, but oh well. <laughs> splish splash. Big rocks. Okay. to clean off my sunglasses. I smeared them and that's right in my view. And now we're going 
going this way. Is it though, or is it a trick? That's pretty road-like, I would say. So it must have taken those guys. That's a little steep on the other side. Here we go. It must have taken them several hours to do that section. Yeah, this, this day has basically been fully off-road. I had the road stuff leading land, leaving Lander, which was a ton of fun, by the way. Those switchbacks are a blast. But then it's been dirt ever since. And gate, okay. I do appreciate them putting the thing on it to mark it. Cause yeah, that would uh, ruin a day. track-ish. This is all actually pretty sandy. It's just that you're able to hit it at speed. And so it's not as big of a deal. Slowing down because I don't know what this is. Okay. Oh, that shadow from the cloud feels really good. I'm still, I'm slowly catching up to the edge of the shadow of the cloud. I'm literally chasing it. just see the tire marks from where the big bikes had trouble. That's pretty deep. Oh yeah, some people, oh yeah. Some people had some problems in here. Whew. And then rocks. Okay, let's slow down. <laughs> there were some. Oh, gear down. This is that bit that he and the one guy was talking about where it's sand and then rocks. Oh, here's the cow track. Okay. So people have just been riding on that to get through. Yeah, you can see where several people have had bad days going through that. Oh, and this. Wow, okay. see solid stuff. That's good. Second gear it is. Good lord. Can I get? There we go. Oh, come on. All right. I don't drive into just a cesspit, but we're gonna pick up the speed just a little bit. Boink. Because uh, I need the airflow. It's 90, that says 97. It's definitely in the 90s. I don't know that it's that hot. Ooh, really deep. Really deep. We're gonna probably fall over. Oh, God. <laughs> Pardon me, scrub brush. 
I didn't mean to do that. Let's uh, get back onto the road. Have churned that up. There we go. God, you can just see the tire marks of people going crazy directions. All right, here comes the road. Looks like. Yep. Yeah, okay. Nobody coming. Here is the pavement, so I'm gonna kill the cameras and I will talk to you in Alcova as I leave there to find a place to camp. One hour later. Welcome to Sloan's General Store in Alcova. Uh, definitely not making it to Elk City today. That would be another 122 miles. Got gas, got water, got food. Damn. It's a stupid joke. Listening to music, so I'm not gonna narrate much. I have 83 miles to Medicine Bow. It's still 85 degrees. And I really don't wanna try and camp in this, cause ugh. We'll see, these cameras are gonna die in about an hour. And then, yeah, we'll see where I end up tonight. Yeah, I'm pretty sure rear facing is off. BDR riders. Well, thank you very much. So, I may have an interesting issue. If you can't tell, it rained last night, slash this morning. So, I don't really know how this is gonna go. So if I end up having to make some pretty significant diversions to avoid mud, that's what's going on. So we got a problem. I'm getting periodically rained on and there's a 58% chance of rain basically throughout the day. So I'm gonna go until I hit mud and then I'll divert because I don't know what this is gonna be like, but I'm not doing what I did the other day. So we'll see. I mean, it dries out super quick and it definitely has not rained hard at any point, but I'm concerned. So we're gonna get into carbon. I got 15 miles to Elk Mountain. We'll see what that looks like. I know that there are a couple of times where I'm on pavement and there are some fairly simple diversions if I need to. But we're gonna try and do that and see what this turns into. Because if it turns into a show, I'll be on pavement for most of the day. I imagine we're gonna find out pretty quick. If I end up having to do basically paved roads to get out of Wyoming, I'll do it. Like, it won't be ideal, but you can't control the weather. And if the 
sun comes out and this all dries up, this is going to be fine, you know, in 15 seconds. Just, it can't get any more wet. So he said it's a uh, bentonite that makes the soil here so slippery. See that sand? That's not mud. Excuse me, honk. Sorry. I know I kind of interrupted you. This is that two track we were talking about in the video. This is fun. <laughs> oh, it's fun. Now that I know that it's not going to be covered in mud. Basically, the issue I'm going to run into is if I get rained on at any point during today, it's going to become a pavement only kind of trip. Those couple of guys I ran into yesterday on the rim, they got into that rain that I hit on the first day, and they were literally having to pull the front wheels off of their bikes and knock the, scrape the mud off of them and off of their fenders. Yeah, there there is no part of the Wyoming BDR that is really rideable when wet. Alright. I keep seeing all of CJ's stickers on the fences. That's funny. I don't have enough stickers to do that. <laughs> God, that's pretty. This looks like an area that could hold water, but that's all right. That's actually pretty good. Five miles to Elk City. Just look at it. state you're in. You're gonna go right across the road, aren't you? There's mom. You do end up zigzagging a little bit across the state, and there's a few sections where you kind of just have to get through it to get across, but it's a good route. That is a moose. Or no, it's not. God, that's a giant buck. Where'd you go? Because you are humongous. And he kept going. God, I'll zoom in on that, but I, I think it was just a deer. 
but he had a humongous rack of antlers. Holy crap. I thought it was a moose initially because it was just so wide. It could have been an elk, but he didn't have the darker colored neck, so I don't think it was. I think it was just a deer. I do feel like the Wyoming and Colorado BDRs comp are going to complement each other really well because if, if you're coming up through Colorado, you connect up to bags and, you know, the first two sections basically look like this. You know, it looks like a lot of what Colorado looked like. The riding's very similar. And then you kind of dip out into the more Wyoming-esque parts of it. And then opposite, if you're going north to south like I am, you're in Wyoming, you're riding through, you know, Wyoming type terrain, Centennial on, like you're kind of in more Colorado-ish terrain, you can kind of get used to it before you jump into Colorado. So, I like it. I think there's going to be a lot of people who connect the two routes. getting a little bit of a like altitude headache. Get into Centennial and drink a bunch of water and yeah, I mean I'm not acclimated to the altitude. I've been at low altitude for a couple of months. And it washed out pretty good. try and stop and talk on a hill. Oh boy. Are you gonna give me any fucking room? Thanks, California. I'm guessing that was maybe a sport vehicle, but like... Damn, dude. And I'm gonna pop out on my road. I guess it may be a dirt road. Okay. Alright, and here comes the pavement. So we're gonna kill the cameras and I will talk to you once I'm I'll probably turn them back on as I'm leaving the centennial just to talk a little bit. Eventually ran into a group, I think it was eight almost. Big old group of bikes. They're going the same way as me. So if I end up in major trouble, I will have uh, some backup coming eventually. <laughs> Talked to a nice lady there in the store in Centennial. And apparently that group of bikes and that truck were together from California. And they were not very nice people. In addition to apparently not knowing how to drive in the mountains, they ruined her rooms, specifically her brand new towels that she had in there. And of course it makes all the rest of us look bad. Folks, if you're gonna be out here doing this, be a good rider.
representative of the adventure and motorcycling community. Because when you're a douchebag, it reflects poorly on all of us. Apparently that's what they were. That was a good break. Got some coffee, got some Gatorade, got a burrito, which was excellent. I can't see anything in the shadows. God, this got really washed out. Uh, it's 156 miles to Bags. It is 10, 1030, and so I'm gonna make it to Bags today, barring some kind of major complication. I see dark clouds. Let's hope that I don't get poured on. Oh, hi, Moose. Okay. Sorry, bud. Um, can you get off the road, please? Thank you. Sorry I spooked you that bad. That was really not what I was trying to do. I'm glad I saw a moose. God, you're way back in there already. Again, the moment they're back, I can barely see them in the trees there. There's no way the camera's going to be able to see them. Cool. Saw a moose. <laughs> I'm kind of surprised he spooked that bad because normally they're kind of indifferent towards people. We're not really threats to them. Uh, yeah. Over here it is. fault. Okay. Poor line execution is all that came down to. Oh, water crossing. I thought I was in first. Be any fun. Ominous looking clouds. Let's hope they wait to uh, do their thing.
super nasty. That's a, I mean, that's a big thunderstorm. <laughs> that was a full-on tail slide. I really, I straight up backed it into that corner. <laughs> Hi, Antelope. Where are you gonna go? Yep, you go the other way. Thank you. Bye. Have a good day, Ned.
still fly the drone. Because it's blowing really hard. right here oh okay all right head cam going off session going off i'll see you when i'm on dirt this is the last offer a bit before i get into bags if i continued up this road i would actually be on the paved road that goes all the way to the colorado pr oh hey how's it going not too bad are you going north or south it, you're gonna you're gonna ride into rain. Yeah, I, I it was chasing me out pretty much the whole time. Doing good, but it's raining back that way too. Well, Are you on the BDR or doing something else? We're gonna do a Connell Divide. Oh, okay. Nice. I did that a couple of years ago. Well, cool. I'm gonna keep going then. All right. Good luck. Deal. Good <laughs> hopefully, uh, hopefully you'll stay out of the rain too. You stayed out of it coming down, or? Uh, well, so the BDR goes further east, uh, and I was getting rain. I was kind of it was chasing me. Are you trying to get to Rollins? Yeah. You should be okay. All right. Be, be careful. Oh yeah, I try. I don't always succeed, but I try. <laughs> Pardon me. Is there a tree down? He's cutting a tree right up there. Oh crap! All right. <laughs> Sorry about that. I don't know. I mean, not like there's anything I can do about it, you know. <laughs> I didn't think you decided to slip through there and time it wrong. Yeah, you never know if it's gonna be. Uh, I've been getting chased by the rain all damn day, so I may just. Yeah, we're we're trying to stay out in front of it right now. We were just up the mountain and. Uh, yeah, me too. It was, <laughs> there was a couple of times I was really trying to get out of the rain. Yeah, I might just uh, divert around to be honest. Yeah, I think I'm just going to flip around. Alright. Well, that makes my decision for me. I think I'm just going to go around and connect to the Colorado BDR. A few inches later. All right, recording, recording. <gasps> that is it for Wyoming. Missed a little bit of it, but did pretty good overall. And now we're gonna head this way. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do all of the off-road between here and Steamboat, because it looks like there might be lightning over here. But uh, we're gonna try. It's the first time I've been back in Colorado since May 5th. It's 81 miles to Steamboat. And yeah, we'll see what happens with weather. Hey dear. <laughs> Just chilling in the field over there. So this northern part of the Colorado BDR has one of those kind of off-road diversions that doesn't really make any sense. You can, if you want to, just follow the road. And there's like one little kind of neat bit of that. Other than that, the entire rest of it is really kind of pointless. And so I'm probably not going to do it. It's, it. It really is just pointless. And also the weather. Oh, f don't 
don't be muddy, don't be muddy, don't be muddy. And I really cannot complain about the rain because Colorado needs it as much as everybody else does. that I did not try and do the off-road stuff because this area just went under a flash flood warning. So, yeah. 